Hello and welcome to summary of all you need to know about The Bath by Janet Frame. I'll explain the meaning of this story as it appears in Stories of Ourselves, the University of Cambridge International Examinations Anthology of Short Stories in English. I'll begin with some context about the author of this story before explaining the plot in a nutshell. I'll explain the characters you should be aware of in the story and then I will highlight and analyse important themes you should be aware of when studying this text. Do bear in mind that we have a Stories of Ourselves course that goes into depth on these stories, so do make sure you also sign up for our course. So let's get started. Now firstly, let's begin with a bit of context relating to Janet Frame herself. She's from New Zealand and she was born in 1924 and she died in 2004. Her works of poetry and fiction are noted for their explorations of alienation and isolation. Frame was born to a railroad worker and a sometime poet who had been made for a family of writer Catherine Mansfield and her early years were marked by poverty, the drowning death of her sister and the disruptions created by her brother's epilepsy and of course this idea of drowning is explored to some extent in the bath. Now in 1945 while studying to be a teacher, Frame herself suffered a mental breakdown. Misdiagnosed as having schizophrenia, she spent nearly a decade in psychiatric hospitals. From 1947, following the drowning death of another sister, she endured repeated courses of electroconvulsive therapy. And during that time, she read the classics voraciously and cultivated her writing talent. Now, 1951, while still a patient, Frame's first book, The Lagoon, was published. A collection of short stories, it expresses the sense of isolation and insecurity of those who feel they don't fit into a normal world. Frame was scheduled to have a lobotomy, which is a surgery on her brain, until hospital officials learned that she had won a literary award for this book, The Lagoon, and the procedure was cancelled and Frame was released in 1955. In all her novels, Frame depicts a society deprived of wholeness by its refusal to come to terms with disorder, irrationality and madness, and her sophisticated and original use of Frame stories to convey the subjectivity of experience and the existence of individuality, distinct realities, is a hallmark of her work. Now let's examine the story itself, The Bath. Now to summarise. On the story, and on the surface rather, the story seems quite direct and simple. It briskly describes what seems to be the routine of a woman who's grown old, and it shows how she's on the verge of no longer being able to take care of herself. She also seems to be poor. The story is told without sentimentality. The woman is alone, and her husband has been dead for a long time, and she visits him often at the cemetery, taking the bus to get there. Yet each visit is getting more and more difficult, or so we think. This is because we really only see a few moments in the woman's life. It's an everyday life and a terrifying life. It's normal and tragic and it's an honest because literal portrait of what it feels like to get old. The story starts with the woman struggling to get out of the bath. It's laborious to draw the bath for her and she must heat the water, haul pails and finally enter. Yet what's worrying and presumably this has been building up for days, months and years is that it's more and more difficult for her to actually get out of the bath once she's done and on this particular day portrayed for us in the story she seems close to this breaking point. This is a day that the woman comes dangerously close to not being able to get out. Scratching her nails against the tub, slipping, falling back in again, not enough strength, no one to help her, she's alone and scared, she's bored and helpless. What would happen if she couldn't get out we ask ourselves. She's thinking and thinking each time she splashes back into the bath and at the same time she struggles and struggles and struggles again and we as readers can really feel her sense of frustration and her growing panic. We also as readers do feel her poverty. She hauls pails to draw a bath and one gets the feeling that she's led a life of very heavy labour and we can almost smell the potato peels that she's trying perhaps to wash off her hands, the garlic, the onions that have infused her body and there's dirt under her fingernails and ground into her knees from scrubbing the wooden floor. Her hair is greasy with dried sweat. She takes baths less and less now. We wonder if it's too much of a luxury for this poor woman and if she's too afraid of reaching a point where she actually can't get out, hence why she doesn't take baths frequently. Now finally she does get out of this bath and she's able to take a bus to her husband's grave site and eventually she does reflect that she might not even able to do this and this is quite clear to us and her world seems like it's going to shrink until there's nowhere else to go. There will be no way to get out of the bath and nothing left at all. 
Also, it's all so banal, it's so ordinary, but also extraordinary, this life that we see. And it seems so straightforward, but also so mysterious, so unfair, and her age seems really inevitable, just like old age, and when you become less and less able to be independent, and we get the sense that being poor, she might not even die well. Now, in terms of the characters in the story, the main one, of course, is the old lady. So the story is narrated from the third person perspective and we get a sense that the old lady is quite isolated as she goes around very routine errands in her day and her husband and parents are dead and we sense she's going increasingly old and unable to conduct simple chores in her house and around in her life. She, however, rails against these limitations. However, she unwillingly succumbs to the acceptance that someone may need to start coming in to help her with daily activities, like having a bath as she grows frail. Now, in terms of themes of this story, the first is loneliness. So the old woman throughout the story seems alone. When she gets stuck in the bath, despite calling out for help, no one comes to assist her. When she's placing the flowers on her husband's gravesite, again, she's alone. The fact that this old woman is so alone in life that she appears so long alone and to long for a time when she herself is dead is quite poignant for us and it's as though life has become just one long struggle for this old woman. The other theme is that of control, so the old lady no longer has control over her body. The tasks she would like to perform seem now very challenging and something as simple as getting out of a bath or taking down a pot of jam from a shelf is something that she's finding increasingly difficult and she can't really do it with ease. She also has to rely on others to assist her and this might be significant as it suggests that time has caught up with her. The next theme is that of struggle. So the old woman struggles with every task that she performs. She also may struggle with the loss of her husband. Not only is she emotionally attached to him, as one would expect a widow to be, but she also relies on him physically. If he was still alive, he would be able to help her out of the bath. However, the sense of struggle that the old woman feels would also read us as leaders to believe that frame is suggesting that life may be getting too much for this old woman. It's as though she wishes for her life to be over. The other important theme, of course, is mortality, which is quite closely linked. So this old woman longs to be dead, such as the difficulty she incurs in life. And not only is the longing for death driven by her loneliness, but it's also the fact that the old woman's body is wearing out. She is unable to do the things she once was and is reliant on others to assist her. And if anything, it seems that there's no joy in the old woman's life as she gets older. Everything is a struggle and it's tinged with sadness. The other theme is that of loss and death, so it may be possible that the loss of the husband of this old woman is just too much for her. Though she attends his grave for his anniversary, it most likely is that she's a frequent visitor to this grave and even though Frame doesn't give any details as to the type of relationship this old woman had with her husband, there's still nonetheless a sense that she loved and continues to love her husband. It may also be significant that the old woman can no longer enjoy the simple things in life such as looking at the sky as this suggests that she may have given up on life and it's as though she's been defeated by her body and the fact that she's alone. Indeed simple things are no longer simple for her and everything is a difficult effort we may not be worth it to this old woman. She also appears to be comfortable actually with the idea of death. Something that is symbolically noticeable by the fact that the old woman wishes she could fall asleep in the graveyard. It's as though the graveyard is the only place where the old woman is able to find peace and also she would be close to her husband. So that's all. If you found the summary video useful, do make sure you sign up for our Stories of Ourselves course and check out our website, which is www.firstreetutors.com, where you can find revision worksheets, model answers, and online courses covering all the major syllabuses, including Ed Excel, AQA, and IGCSE. Thank you so much for listening.